Last week, we talked about mean radiant temperature, the invisible influence of surrounding surfaces on how warm or cool we feel. But MRT is only half of the thermal comfort story. The other half comes from the air itself. How warm it is, how much is moving, and how it interacts with our skin. To understand how these two pieces fit together, building scientists use a combined metric called operative temperature. It's one of the most important comfort indicators in standards like ASHREA 55 and ISO 7730. And it gives us something neither air temperature nor MRT can describe on their own. The total thermal experience of a person in a space. In this video, we're going to break down what operative temperature actually means, why it's more useful than relying on the air temperature or MRT alone, and how it's estimated in real-world building practice. Operative temperature brings together two major heat exchanges happening at your body's surface. Convection, which depends on air temperature, and radiation, which depends on the temperatures of the surrounding surfaces. If you imagine yourself sitting in a perfectly uniform room, walls, floor, ceiling and air all at the same temperature, that temperature would be your operative temperature. In reality, buildings are never that uniform. Some surfaces are warmer, some are cooler, and the air might move more in one part of the room than another. Operative temperature is a way of asking what single uniform temperature would make you feel the same as you do right now, with all these mixed heat exchanges happening around you. It simplifies a complex thermal environment into a single value that closely matches human perception. Operative temperature is often much closer to what people feel than the thermostat setting. For example, imagine a room where the air temperature is a comfortable 21 degrees, but the glazing is cold on a winter morning. Your mean radiant temperature drops, which pulls the operative temperature down too. And suddenly the room feels chilly, even though the thermostat hasn't budged. Or imagine a sunlit room, where the air is 19 degrees Celsius, but the walls and floor warmed by the sun are radiating heat at much higher temperatures. The operative temperature rises, and the space feels hot long before the air does. This is why operative temperature is central in thermal comfort standards. It captures the combined effect of radiation and convection reflecting what the body actually experiences. In many comfort models, operative temperature is calculated as a weighted average of the mean radiant temperature and the air temperature. The exact weights depend on how your body transfers heat, mainly through convection and radiation. In simple terms, when the air is still, radiation matters more so MRT has a stronger influence. When the air is moving, say with fans or higher air speeds, convection becomes more significant and the air temperature gets more weight. In everyday buildings with low air movement, MRT and air temperature often have a similar influence, so operative temperature ends up close to the midpoint between the two but even small differences can change how a space feels. Operative temperature can be derived using the following formula, where T MR is the mean radiant temperature, T A is the air temperature, and V is the air velocity. Just like MRT, Operative temperature has a precise mathematical definition in comfort standards. But in real design work, people use more practical methods. One common approach is to start with the calculated or measured MRT and combine it with the air temperature to estimate the operative temperature. 
if the air is stale, which is typical in most indoor spaces, the two are usually weighted about equally. For example, if the air is 21 degrees Celsius and the MRT is 17 degrees Celsius, the operative temperature would be somewhere around 19 degrees Celsius. Even though the thermostat reads 21 degrees Celsius, the space feels closer to 19 degrees Celsius, because the cold surfaces are dominating your radiant heat loss. Designers, energy modelers and comfort consultants often rely on simulation tools to do this automatically. Tools like Climate Studio, Energy Plus, Ladybug Tools, Wufi and others calculate MRT, air temperature and operative temperature together as part of the thermal comfort model. In post-occupancy studies, some teams use a glow thermometer, the same device used for MRT, to approximate operative temperature directly in the field. Operative temperature is the bridge between what the air is doing and what the surfaces around us are doing. It turns a complex thermal environment into a single, intuitive value that closely aligns with how we actually feel in a room. By combining air temperature and mean radiant temperature, operative temperature moves us past what the thermostat says and towards a truer understanding of comfort. One that designers can model, measure and meaningfully improve. If you want to learn more about how mean radiant temperature works, take a look at last week's video. And if you want to learn more about how personal factors like clothing and metabolic rate affect your thermal comfort, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. Stay informed, stay inspired, Timber Talk.